today I'm going to talk about a place that is so beautiful, the words cannot describe it. They use metaphors, they use symbolisms, they use things to try to get people to understand the depth, the height, the grasping of the perfection of that home. Someday the people that love and obey God will someday see. We'll read first the thing that before heaven is preceded, something that comes before this. Revelation chapter 20 verse 10, it talks about this. It's going to be a day that's going to come for you and for me, for every single Tom, Dick, and Harry, and Joe and Jane out there. It says in this verse, Revelation chapter 20, verse 10, And the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of burning sulfur, where the beasts and the false prophets have been thrown. So people who are deceivers, liars, false teachers, they're going to go to this lake of burning sulfur, which is this hot, sticky substance that you can't get off, like honey, but it burns through you. It's a horrible thing, and it says they're going to be burned into a lake of this stuff. They will be tormented day and night forever and ever. So days are going to pass, nights are going to pass, weeks are going to pass, years are going to pass, and it's never going to end. This isn't the heaven I'm talking about. This is the other place. Then I saw a great white throne, and him who was seated on it, and earth and heaven fled from its presence. And there was no place for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne. Every black man, white person, Asian, small man, tired man, poor man, weak man, mighty king, president, every single person, woman, no matter how great a stature, being in the model industry or being on the streets, every single person on this here globe, this terrestrial sphere, will be before the king of kings. It says both great and small standing before the throne, and books were opened. All the dead were there, and books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. What is this book of life? We'll continue reading. The dead were judged according to what they had done in the books. Everything you do? I did porn. I cursed my parents. I lusted after this woman I want to have sex with. I helped somebody out. I obeyed the word of God. I was baptized. I went to church faithfully. I shared the message of truth, of salvation, of Jesus Christ. Written down. It says, the sea gave up the dead that were in them. So people are going to be judged according to what is in these books. And those in their sea are going to be given up. And it says, death and Hades gave up the dead that were in them. And each person was judged according to what they had done. That's serious stuff right there, isn't it? Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire, to that sulfur pit, which is also fiery. The lake of fire is the second death. That means you'll be separated from God for all time. You won't be separated body from spirit because you're already dead. You're going to be separated from the maker of life itself. When the thousand years pass, 10,000 years, you're still going to be separated. Eons will pass, millenniums will pass. You'll be in pain and you'll still be separated. It doesn't that just sound just horrific? Anyone whose name was not found written in a book of life will be thrown into the lake of fire. So the books are the record keepings. And the book of life is where you all know if you are saved or not. Now we're going to get into how you can get your name in the book of life and not have your deeds recorded in the books that it's talking about here a little later. Now we're talking about heaven. Revelation chapter 21 verse 1. This apostle John is standing before this. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. This will come in 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 13. It says the earth will be consumed in fire. The heavens will be laid bare, laid waste. A will melt in fervent heat the elements. Heaven and earth will melt in the fury, the flame. Think of the sun exploding and just completely devastating everything in a second. And think of that, how it's going to be with God on that judgment day. So there's going to be a spiritual earth, a spiritual heaven, a place where we will live, a dwelling place for those whose names are written in the book of life. 
Then it says, for the first time the first earth have passed away and there is no longer any sea. Yeah, when the sun comes and is destroyed, the earth is destroyed, there will be no sea, there will be no land, there will be no universe, there will be nothing, absolutely nothing. And then John says, I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem coming down from heaven, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. Now the church is called the bride of Christ, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. When we see that spiritual Jerusalem, we're going to see the spiritual kingdom coming down in the spiritual dwelling place we will have with God. Beautifully adorned, the church, the kingdom, God's people, us united with them for all time, forever and ever. Beautifully dressed. She will be just, if you see a bride coming down the aisle, radiant. That's how, the, that's how that beautiful church will be, radiant, just glowing. Then Joshua said, I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling is now amongst the people, and He will dwell with them. He will dwell with, his, with all those who have had their names written in the book of life. God will be with you. They will be His people. And God himself will be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eye. There will be no more death or mourning, crying or pain. They're not going to have any of that anymore. No more. For the old things have passed away. You're not going to see things that break your heart. You're not going to see jaded things that make you want to go and cry. You're not going to have betrayals and pains and your body's not going to fade. You're not going to be hurting anymore. You're not going to have anything in this life dragging you down because this life will be gone. And, and you are needing comfort. He will be there to comfort you. No more death. We will have no more of this. It says, John said, I was carried away in the spirit to a great mountain high and was shown the holy city. Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God is shown with the glory of God like that bride. And its brilliance was like the very precious jewel, like a jasper or like a diamond. The city of God was like a diamond, lit a flame. Okay, have you ever seen a diamond with candles all around it? just lighting it up, God's glory, lighting up that diamond, the city of God. And then it says, it was clear as crystal. This Jerusalem was so clear, it, it just, it was pure. The purest arm of brilliant stone was radiating from it. It had eight high walls with 12 gates. Now 12 stands for completion, authority. The 12 gates stands that we all those who are His can completely come into His dwelling place for all time. With 12 angels at the gates, there's going to be the completion of greeting, of you being accepted into that place is full and total. You'll be welcomed in every way to the uttermost in his authority. On the gates were written the names of the twelve tribes of Israel, the spiritual Israel, which we can be. It talks about this in First Peter chapter 1. It talks about this and in the Bible that the spiritual Israel are those who are God's people who have followed Jesus Christ. And your names, it says, the names of the twelve tribes of Israel will be there completion again, completion of the spiritual household of God. There were three gates on the east and three gates on the north and three gates on the west and three gates on the south. The wall of the city had twelve foundations and on them were written the twelve apostles of the Lamb. Now the apostles are the ones who gave us the completion through the authority of God, the whole word of God, the whole truth, the whole revelation. You can read in Jude uh, verse 3 about that. 
that it was once and all delivered to the saints through the apostles who gave it. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 20, it says, The church, the kingdom of God on this earth, was established through the prophets, Christ Jesus, and through his apostles. So they are part of enabling us to have that spiritual kingdom above by making us able to be part of the kingdom, have a household here but no oh. So that when we follow him and we're a part of his spiritual Israel, we can someday be with him in heaven. Verse 16, the city was laid out like four square as long as it was wide. Its measuring of the city was of rod and it was 12,000 static in length and as wide as long. You know, the place, the city, is trying to tell us it's going to be big. I mean, it's not going to be like Donald Trump big. It's going to be big. It's going to be from one, like, United States, from one seaboard of Colorado to the Canadian border, from Florida all the way down to the eastern side of the seaboard of the United States to Colorado, to Canada to the southern tip of Florida. So it's going to be basically all on either side of America. It's going to fill it all up. And the height of the walls, it's going to go all up to the you know, out of space. Now, obviously, it's not a literal thing. It's just saying it's going to, this city is going to be, this place, this dwelling place is going to be vast. It's going to be able to encompass everyone, and it's going to, it's going to just expand the, the visions of our mind of how far and wide and deep and profound his home will be in its, in its place where we can dwell. Verse 17, the angel measured the wall using human measurements, and it was a 1144 cubit thick. The wall was made out of diamond, jasper. Wow. These beautiful walls that go this high and this high are, are going to shine like jewels, like the diamonds that you see in those beautiful uh, TK stores, you know, diamond stores where guys go to get those rings and, and the girls go like, ooh, look at that. They shine, they shimmer. They're just brilliant, like light sparkling on water with the sun coming down. Just gorgeous. And the city was of pure gold, as pure as glass. The purest form of gold, so beautiful, so bright and shiny was this gold, the city that we will someday dwell in, that it will shine like glass being lit up. The foundations of the city walls were decked with every kind of precious jewel. Wow. Precious stone. The first foundation was diamond, the second sapphire, the third agate, the fourth emerald, the fifth onyx. Goodness gracious. The sixth ruby, the seventh crystallite, the eighth merrill, the ninth topaz, the tenth turquoise, the eleventh japheth, the twelfth amethyst. So, whoa. Let's describe some of these stones. Of course, jasper is diamond. The most precious of stones, sapphire, brilliant blue stone, like the brilliant blue sky above. Claudeline is a sky colored striped diamond, and emerald is bright green. Like the brightest green you see, like uh, on the ocean tops, that myrtle green. Sardox is red and white strips stone. Sardox is various shades of red. Crystallite is transparent gold or yellow. A yellow that just shines like a sunbeam. Parallel shades of green, yellow, and blue. Topo is yellow green. Chrysosporas, gold tinted green. Jade, blue or violet colored. Wow. Amethyst purple stone. So it's going to be multicolored, various stones, all lit up with the glory of God. Verse 21. Twelve gates were twelve pearls. Whoa. And each gate was made of a single pearl. Big pearls. Man. The great street of the city was of gold as pure as transparent glass. We'll be walking on gold, my friends. Walking on beauty all around us, lit, ablaze, aflame with wonder. I did not see a temple in the city because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb were its temple. That means we're going to dwell with Him. He's going to be somebody that overcompasses us and overshadows us and is a place where His dwelling will be within us. We will have Him abide as a protection, as a temple over our heads for all time. The city does not need the sun nor the moon to shine, for the glory of God gives it its light. 
The city will shine, not because of candles, not because of a moonshine, not because of a sunrise, but because God's glory will light the whole thing up with that beautiful radiance, with the love, peace, and majesty that comes from Him. It says, the Lamb is its light. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring the splendor into it. On no day will gates ever be shut. It's going to be so safe, we will, they will never need to shut those doors, for there will be no night there. Just, just like eternal sunrise, forever lit up. Nothing impure will ever enter it, nor will anyone who does shameful or deceitful things, but only those whose names are written in the book of life. So we're going to talk about how to stay away from being impure shortly. We're getting to that right now. How to have your names erased from the account records. Verse 21, verse 7. The following verse. He that overcomes shall inherit all these things, and I will be his God and he will be my son. That means the Father will claim you as sonship. You'll have that title, you'll have that ownership, you'll have him as a father looking out for you forever. But how do we overcome? What does Revelation chapter 3 verse 4 and 5 say? It says through being pure. You have not spoiled your garments. He that overcomes shall be clothed in white raiment. I will not blot out his name from the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. So, by having clean spiritual garments, keeping yourself pure. And how do we keep ourselves pure? How do we have our spiritual soul garments washed? Do we go to a washing machine and get a quarter and, it, you know, no, 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 no. It says, by the blood of the Lamb, Revelation chapter 7, verse 14. John says, sir, you know. And the angel said, these are those who come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. You want to have your soul clean. You've got to have His blood on you, my friends. I'm not talking about literal blood. You've got to have something going on. This blood is talking about how do you wash yourself? Acts chapter 20, verse 16. What was Paul told to do when he was in sin? He says, it was said, repent and be baptized, immersed in water, have your sins washed away. If you want to have that, your garments clean, the sins removed, the vile stuff that's coating your soul, you don't go to a laundromat, you go to Jesus Christ. And it's water. First Peter 3, verse 21, And this water now doth also save you, not the removal of dirt from the flesh, again, but the pledge of a good conscience towards God is giving yourself an allegiance to Him. That's one way how you overcome. Another way you overcome is through this. Through remaining faithful once you are saved through the blood of the Lamb. Revelation chapter 2 verse 9. Uh, the angel says to a church, I know your works and tribulation and poverty, but you are rich. I know that the blasphemy of they that are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Fear none of these things which you shall suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast you into prison, and you shall have trial. You shall be tried for tribulation of ten days, but be faithful unto death, I'll give you the crown of life. Be faithful, no matter what happens, no matter what comes your way, no matter who drags you down, no matter what pain, tribulation, things in this life that cause you to say, why? If you're faithful to him, you will have that crown of life, even if it means death. Verse 11, he who has an ear, let him understand what the Spirit says to the churches. You can't understand what you need to be doing. This is what it says you need to do. It says, he that overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. You want to escape the second death? You want to be pure, blood of the Lamb, and be faithful. Don't want your names written down. You don't want to have your name, your actions, your, your deeds in those book of accounting. Then this is what you need to be doing. Again, overcoming through holding fast to his teachings and keeping his works. This is what you need to do. You can look in Revelation chapter 2, verse 24 and 26, and Revelation chapter 3, verse 11 through 12. We don't have time to get into that today, but read these verses. These are the people who will be 
as it says in Revelation chapter 7, verse 15, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in the temple. And he who sits on the throne will be their shelter with his presence. For they will no longer hunger, nor will they thirst anymore, nor will the sun beat down on them, nor any heat. No more discomfort, no more gnawing of the stomach, no more weakness, no more, you know, No more seasons that give us issues. Runny nose in winter, colds, flus, sunstrokes, none of that stuff. No more thirst, no more parched lips. We will have his shelter, his support for all times. Verse 17, for the Lamb is the center of the throne. He will be their shepherd. He's going to always look out for you once you're there. And he will guide you to springs of living water. And he will wipe away every tear from their eyes. He will give you the ability, once you're with him, to live forever. To be there forever. To have his blessings forever. How do we get there? Well, there's two ways to go down a path the right way and the wrong way. What does it say in Matthew chapter 7, verse 13? Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many are going to enter through it. Going to hell is easy. All you have to do is do your own thing, sin, you know, follow his way, the devil's way. Do your, your pleasures. Do what your heart desires in religion instead of his way in religion. Or just don't do any religion. And you will definitely go the wrong way, I tell you. For the gate is small and narrow is the way that leads to life, and only a few are going to find it. Those who put God first and His truth first and do what He says first, there's going to be only a few, a remnant, a small group of folks who do it. It says, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing by innocently ravenous wolves. They are going to tell you to take the big way, the easy way, a big road where everybody's going. They're going to they have smiling faces and, and, and say everything's peachy cute and do, do what feels right. And don't listen to them. They're ravenous wolves. As wolves destroy the flesh of sheep, of the flock, they will destroy your spiritual souls if you let them. You can know them by their fruits, it says in verse 16. So how do we get on the right way? John chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. If you follow Jesus' way through abiding in his truth, you will have that life. By coming to him, that is how you come to the Father. And what is this way? Revelation chapter 22, verse 14. Jesus says, through inspiration of the Holy Spirit by John, Blessed are they that keep his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life, and enter into the gates of the city. You want to enter into the city? If you want to be right with God, do what he says. Now this, again, does not mean we have to be perfect. You don't have to walk around like a... You know, these Catholic saints you see on these pictures with these big old halos around your head, you know, and animals are flocking around you, and, and you know, you're, you're walking around like this, you know, just with your eyes glazed over. No, that's not what I was talking about there. And that's not the sainthood that God expects of you. There's no one perfect but Jesus Christ. It just means you've got to do what He says. And He first says you've got to be saved. Believing in Him comes first, John 3, 16. Repenting, turning away from the bad stuff of your life and letting Him lead your life and be immersed in water and have your sins forgiven. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Confessing His name before others. Romans 10, 10. These are the things you need to do to be saved. You've got to do that first. Be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Then it says in 1 John chapter 1, verse 7. We've got to strive. We don't have to be perfect, but we've got to strive to obey what He says, to try our best to obey what He has told us to do. If we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ purifies us from all sins. If you want to have your sins removed from the book of accounting, be baptized and your sins will be washed away. If you want to have your sins removed from accounting once you're saved, walk in the light, not in darkness. Walk according to His way, not your way. It says the blood of Jesus Christ purifies us from all sins when we do that. If we claim to be without sin, verse 8, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Like I said, we can't be perfect. But if we confess our sins, 
when we do mess up, when we do fall down, which we will make mistakes, it says He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. When we mess up, ask for forgiveness. We've got to do our best to do what He says, what He teaches. But when we do screw up, we do have that advocate through the Father, Jesus Christ, is the Son of God. Understanding this, let's be wise. As it says in Daniel chapter 20, oh, verse 2, about judgment. Many of those who sleep in the dust of the ground will awake, these to everlasting life, but others to disgrace and everlasting contempt. Those who will are wise will shine brightly like the brightness of the expanse of heaven. You want to shine like the heavens for all time, for all eternity, seasons, past seasons, come. Be wise, pay attention, follow what he says is truth. Everlasting life is in that being wise, which is knowing what you need to do and doing it. It says Matthew chapter 13, verse 43, The righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears, let him hear. If you heard this, do what it says. Find a church of Christ because they follow just the truth. They don't follow man-made rules, creeds, or teachings. They just follow the Word of God, which is what we're supposed to do. As we've said here, people who don't abide or obey the Word of God, but obey other things, their, their own desires, their own wants, their own wishes. They're following the big road. It's blessed are those who keep the commandments, for they may enter into the gates of the city. You've got to do what God says in His Bible to be pleasing to Him, not what man says. God did this, His Word, to be saved, to be washed in the blood of the Lamb. I want to see you in heaven. I want to get to heaven. So let's all get there together, walking down that narrow road. And God willing, I will see you there someday. Take care. Goodbye.